felt like he knew the doctor now. His belongings had spoken lengths about him. But what Carl had heard worried him. Carl, like many of his contemporaries, felt like he had more trouble breathing when he wasn't smoking. Cigarette was his own personal breathing assistant. Mm. 
Je m'attendais pas à ce qu'un étrange retentisse par ici. Moi te dire, je prends plus de chance depuis que ça rôde dans ce bout-là. J'ai ma carabine au bout du doigt et puis bang, 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 si ça s'approche. <rire> Si tu veux du linge chaud, parce que t'es habillé comme un gars de la ville, je dirais pas non à une bonne bouteille de caribou. Puis tu pigeras ce que tu voudras parmi mes guenilles. <rire> Oyez, 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 il y a un petit gars d'écarté dans ma maison. Gadon, ça ouvre la pentille. Prends là, je m'en fous. Perds ton temps dans mes déchets tant que tu rapportes du caribou. <rire> Mon beau bonnet du bon temps. Puis ma ceinture, où ce que je glissais mon flasque. Le monde tournait plus rond quand on s'habillait tout de même. C'est vrai, le jeune, que tu te promènes quasiment en bobette. Une bonne pelisse, ça te fera pas de tort. Mais je vois te dire une chose. Dans ton coin de pays comme paris on n'a rien sans rien. Et où, mon caribou? C'est encore beau. Tout ce qui est vieilli est bien meilleur. <rire> T'apparences que mon caribou tarde. Tu marches, tu sens des pieds. <rire> Vois-tu le livre là C'est le Wendigo. Ouais, le Wendigo. Un guerrier qui devient un loup pour se venger de sa grosse peine. Et... charger l'usure du plancher. <rire> T'apparences que mon caribou tarde. Tu 
tu marches, tu marches, tu marches, tu sens des pieds. <rire> gomme moi la belle rose de la tulipe, qui se donne au yob sur le mercredi des cendres. Si tu peux effrayer cette histoire-là. Ah, oh, la belle pétarade. En 17 que c'était. Et le caiseux, il se souvient de moi avec ma belle carabine. Bang, bang, que je lui disais. Bang, bang, bang. Ah, oh, le bon temps. Dans mon temps, c'était comme sur l'image. On était vrai, fier, fort, puis on avait le bon lieu de notre bord. Dans mon temps, c'était comme sur l'image. On était vrai, fier, fort, puis on avait le bon lieu de notre bord. Oyez, 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 il y a un petit gars d'écarté dans ma maison. Hé, la Corivo, batèche, ça te passe l'envie de te marier, la Corivo. Elle tuait tous ses maris, squick, les uns après les autres. Pas de pitié dans le mariage. Touche pas à ça, l'enfant, tu pourrais te faire mal. Touche pas à ça, l'enfant, tu pourrais te faire mal. Un bon galon de caribou, puis on devient ami. Sinon, mon petit gars, tu sors avant que je te sorte. <rire> que t'as pas mieux à faire.
There, Carl had fed his mind, but had forgotten the harsh reality that his body also needed nourishment, especially in the dead of winter. With a homemade shooting range such as this, it wasn't hard to imagine a stray bullet ending its course inside the flesh of an unsuspecting passerby. Granted, Carl thought, there wasn't much in the way of passersby around here. shivered as he saw the emblem, the Patriot flag used during the 1837 rebellion and which had resurfaced in 1970s Quebec, flown proudly by the FLQ terrorist groups. This flag meant bombs, kidnappings, threats in the papers. It was a sign of rebellion. That truck had obviously seen its share of gravel roads. Carl wasn't a mechanic but he could easily tell that only the most heartfelt prayer would bring this old beater back from its slumber. With that cold, however, it was more likely that it would wait until next spring to wake up. The place looked more like a pigsty than a house. 
A heavy stench of curdled milk, cheap alcohol, and boiled cauliflower filled the air. Rock music invaded the minds of men even in the remotest of places. The man didn't own a turntable though, so there's that going for him. Back then, in Africa and elsewhere, people were ready to take up arms to stand against the yoke of English imperialism. In Montreal, mailboxes were blown up, abductions were carried out, and violent manifestos were distributed to media outlets. But around here, in the great northernmost, all a man could do is curse out loud against a faraway evil and pray for the revolution to arise. That man, by any reckoning, was from that very stock. At Agen Bluin, seems like that pig had a name after all. Carl now knew how to quench the drunkard's thirst. The rag reeked of fermented vomit. Carl wondered how one could bear to live in such gross and horrid conditions. You had to be out of your mind to cook up white whiskey at home. The all-surrounding stench of alcohol alone was probably enough to gas a man to death. Carl knew right away that the owner of this place wasn't a copper collector. No, this was a junk man's base of operations. The guy definitely seemed like quite the expert in scavenging scrap metal, with or without permission, surely. In the right hands, red metal could sell like hotcakes. If Carl had at any point wished to get his hands on some Kedibu, he couldn't have wished for better than a distillery like this one. Thank you. 
people are so possessive with their land as a dog is with hydrants. What good was a motorless car? The mechanic sure had an odd way to go about repairing things. Well, this truck's not going anywhere. Where were the amputated parts? Carl grinned as he pictured a Frankenstein-esque car lying around somewhere made of parts from a dozen different vehicles. Another worrisome victim of this ice, this one seemingly petrified in action. The poor man, before being frozen solid, seemed to have been defending the entrance to his cabin. But from what? The week of October 5th, thought Carl. That was this week. The plug should have been here by now. The shape of this machine, almost straight out of Star Trek, was out of the ordinary to say the least. It felt like this thing could fly up into space at any moment.
Something very important must have been in there for the man to take such time and effort to hide it. But Carl didn't know how to reach it. It was an indisputable fact that machines like this entailed a level of intellectual finesse that Carl was lacking. The very first steps of man on the moon were made more than a year ago. The event had surely captivated the mechanic's mind for him to still keep this around. To all appearances, Carl concluded, the owner of the place had moved more essentials from his house inside the garage. Peculiar man indeed. Perhaps someone was expecting an important call. In any case, that person's in for a long wait. Carl already noticed that telephone services weren't provided in this area. The milk was sorted by color, from the whitest to the greenest, or in other words, from the freshest to the sourest. Nice carillon. They say it's supposed to soothe the soul. But with this powerful gale that seemingly never sleeps, it was far more likely to get on anyone's nerves. Carl deducted this was a map of the area. Were those pins pointing to places of interest? <laughs> 